Hello, friends, and I'm sorry for the little mm, delay here. Our, our new moon is at um, 1, let's see, 10.52 and 28 seconds. So we have a little bit of time in which we'll start our meditation. Unfortunately, um, I am not assisted, apparently, uh, at this time. And that means that the, uh, the members of the tech crew um, are not really, really here. So I want to admit everybody, make sure that uh, you're with me in the main room. And uh, I'm sorry, as I say, for the little <clears throat> technical snafu. Um, apparently, I'm the host. And uh, being the host, I should know all of these technical things. But uh, uh, maybe maybe enough is known for the moment. We're also trying to translate into Vietnamese because Anne is here. But uh, that requires a special setup. So for those who are from Vietnam and um, with us, we will provide the translation um, a little bit later. Well, there are 30 some of us here and I just want to welcome you. I also want to say that I have um, begun working again on a discipleship in the new age, uh, the third section, which is about the six stages of discipleship. I've been sending that out to a few people whose addresses I know. And uh, if you have not receive them, you can find them on Makara and also on our YouTube channel, Moria Federation, um, uh, how does it go? A Moria Federation Esoteric Education. So there's plenty to listen to there and a very powerful section. Well, here we are at the new moon, which sometimes we can call the uh, Shambhala moon. I think that's one way to, to look at it. Um, I think that this alignment with the earth, moon, and sun will be contributing to the eventual disintegration of the moon. We're told that really it's getting smaller and smaller. And in a later round, I'm not exactly sure which round, will it be the fifth major uh, scheme round or the seventh, it will disappear entirely. So every, every new moon is an opportunity to bring solar power of a spiritual kind uh, into the lunar vehicles. And eventually that will contribute to a great uh, transformation. At the moment uh, we have the new moon in Gemini. And remember, I recognize my other self. And in the waning of that self, I grow and glow. Um, so in a little while, we will have that. And I will, um, <clears throat> although my uh, singing voice is not the best at the moment, um, I will um, 
sound and ohm at the moment of the new moon. So um, hopefully you can see the meditation in front of you and we will simply begin and we will have hopefully some moments of silence before the new moon occurs. Our work is to plant seeds, even as farmers and agriculturalists do, to plant seeds at the time of the new moon. Individual seeds, national seeds, and seed for the entire human race. And please make a note of what you plant so you can sort of work for the fruition of that seed during the cycle, the complete lunation cycle until the next new moon, uh, which will be in the sign Cancer. Okay, friends, so let's get going on our meditation. Okay. And we begin by realizing something from the teaching that the earth functions as the base of the spine center for the solar logos. There are always a number of different planets that may contribute, Pluto, Uranus, Saturn, Mars, Mercury, but the Earth, our little planet, or rather let's call it our, our scheme, is the base of the spine. And so you can kind of understand that the moon, which is an abandoned shell really, uh, of the earth scheme is caught between the earth itself, the dense uh, or the, the lowest globe with the, um, the most dense material connected with it. Uh, it's caught between the earth, earth globe of the earth chain and the sun, which is of course an opportunity to negate the decaying tendency, uh, the vampiristic tendency of that shell that we call that abandoned shell that we call the moon. So Earth is the base of the spine center. And we realize that a very strong kind of shambolic will line energy is available at this time, even as at the full moon, the emphasis is particularly on consciousness. So as we're meditating together, a little group, let us attempt to bring our personality equipment into a state of receptivity to solar energies and therefore an improved purification. So we imagine the, um, the white light 
sweeping through our physical nature and the physical nature of the group. We imagine the same light bringing order rather than chaos to the etheric nature, our nature and that of the group. An ordered, organized, receptive etheric nature, receptive to higher points of tension. through the white purifying light. And the same with the astral vehicle, let the white light sweep through. And let prevailing glamours be weakened and somewhat neutralized and the mind let the white light sweep through bringing clarity to our thought process bringing reason and logic and yet a spiritual version of reason and logic so that eventually we can hold the lower mind steady in the light of the soul. And the same for the entire personality, elemental, which is the combination of all the lower elementals within it. The personality is swept with white light. And rather than being the opponent of the angel of the presence, is rapidly becoming the instrument of the angel of the presence. So what we are cultivating now is the individual Christ and the group Christ. And more and more, the hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory, which is the transfigured state, is more and more a part of us individually and in our group a group which can one day express this transfiguring hope of glory. Now we withdraw our consciousness from our personality vehicles and we feel ourselves at least imaginatively established in within the field of light and love and spiritual power spiritual 
sacrificial will. Imaginatively, it's like a new field. We're not just dealing person to person. We're dealing much more soul to soul. in the one soul. And we're all together in this. We're reaching out to the spiritually minded people of the world, the men and women of goodwill first. As if everyone who is expressing goodwill can be found by us in the soul nature. whatever the country, wherever. And those more intense and consistent servers, the members of the new group of world servers, can be found by us. And it's as if we begin to merge in soul with them. this very important group, which is more and more becoming the instrument of hierarchy. We merge with them imaginatively as if in the state of soul. And then we reach even further because all souls are one, really. There is no my soul or thy soul. And we use that very powerful second ray mantra when thinking about all of humanity and many other kingdoms. Not is, but me. And our capacity then to find soul in every human being but even to find identification with the lesser kingdoms and the greater kingdoms, not is, but me.
The Antikorana Bridge is visualized passing through a group of retained energies from the soul and rising, as it were, uh, into the spiritual triad and towards the permanent atoms of the triad. We've drawn into a pool of retained energies, soul light, soul love, soul sacrificial will, soul synthesis, and soul monadic will in the jewel in the lotus. And the bridge is seen as rising, but primarily of the color indigo and passing through this pool of retained energies. And we will use the word of power. I see the greatest light, secondary word of power and sound the ohm while we inwardly say to ourselves, I see the greatest light. It's like we're projecting in the indigo bridge, a beam of pure white light to reach into the triad and give us planetary mind planetary love, planetary will. I see the greatest light. Oh, I see the greatest light and we have to realize that this is a powerful new moon. Uh, it has an eclipse connected with it. And that always renders things more powerful, more powerful. Let's say kind of solar eclipse. And here in Finland, we're seeing it too, different places. So lesser things are blotted out and greater things are revealed. Now we continue as there's not much time before the moment of the exact full moon, new, rather new moon. What is Shambhala? Powerful at this time, especially at a eclipse, eclipsing moments in the new moon. It is a world of pure energy, of light, and of directed force. It can be seen as streams and centers of force, all forming a pattern of consummate beauty. 
all potentially invocative of the world of the soul and of the world of phenomena. It therefore constitutes in a very real sense, the world of causes. Now, think of the, how you will work. This is Gemini. I recognize my other self and in the waning of that self, I grow and glow. How you will plant a seed to grow into something of value for your individual egoic lotus. We'll pause for a moment. What will that seed be for you? Now, perhaps by the time of the full moon, we'll be able to see the result of this individual planting, but name it to yourself so you don't forget and so you can follow the progress of cultivating this particular seed. and mark it down. Then imagine that you are planting at this time, we as a group planting for the nation, your nation. What would you plant which can add something of value to the causal body of your nation. The causal body of a nation is a real thing and no nations are ready yet to dispense with it. And now think even more deeply what seed will you plant 
imaginatively for humanity as a whole and for its egoic lotus and causal body which will take many millions of years to complete but every little quality of value counts what will you plant for humanity as a whole So, from the individual level, from the national level, for the pan-human level, we are adding qualities to the causal body. And we want to, through our thought, over the next month, and through our actions, see to the flourishing of these seeds. So new qualities appear or qualities already growing and our efforts strengthen them. Now I'm going to have some silence for us. And during the silence, let us ponder on the worlds of politics, religion, economics, especially the three uh, uh, rays, the first three rays, and divine love working through them. So um, let's be as open as possible to that energy of divine purpose, working through the divine plan, uh, carrying at this time the energies of Shambhala and thus we can aid uh, in our groups the divine plan. So we'll be having some silence for approximately five minutes. And um, at 10, 52 and 28 seconds, um, we'll have either the ohm or a bell uh, to signal the moment of the um, new moon.
this is a time when a powerful alignment occurs between the Earth globe and the Sun with the normally obstructive moon uh, caught on that axis. So solar energy will be pouring into the moon and contributing to its disintegration and it will become less and less of a barrier to the solarization of the earth the earth globe and its ruler the globe lord and we will make our contribution whether it's to the work of the Manu or the Bodhisattva or the Maha Chohan because of the seeds we are planting positive changes however slowly will be occurring a great movement towards a better way for humanity and the other kingdoms is in process. So it's an inner responsibility review the seeds that you have planted and that you have planned to nourish over the coming month in different ways. How you do that will be up to you and your internal life but it will be a form of service. And you can work through meditation and through deepening your studies and finally applying the qualities that you would like to see applied to your individual life, to your group and national life, and to humanity as a whole. And then you will become an effective agent in the expressing of the divine plan. Now, the forces of obstruction are powerfully at work at this time. They are trying to uh, take away uh, the will of the people. It may be happening in the United States, but if it succeeds, it will happen everywhere. And that's what they want. They want to prevent people from having their say about the direction of their nation and of humanity as a whole. It's a very selfish, very dangerous uh,
kind of um, fabrication. They pretend that the voter restraints, the voter deprivations, which they have engineered, are for everybody's welfare. But the whole thing is based upon a selfish lie. And that lie will be promoted just as the Nazis did with the propaganda chief Goebbels. If you're going to tell a lie, tell it big and tell it often. And the weak minds of the millions succumb. So at this time of implantation, let us again use great invocation number two. And seek that liberation be the result of humanity's interplay and not deprivation of their will. Selfishness must be overcome. Let the Lords of Liberation issue forth. Let them bring succor to the sons of men. Let the rider from the secret place come forth and coming save. Come forth, O Mighty One. Let the souls of men awaken to the light, and may they stand with massed intent Let the fiat of the Lord go forth. The end of woe has come. Come forth, O mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread abroad, O Mighty One. Let light and love and power and death Fulfill the purpose of the coming one. The will to save is here. The love to carry forth the work is widely spread abroad. The active aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, 
O Mighty One, and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall. The rule of evil now must end. Dear friends, thank you for being with us at our meditation at the time of the Gemini full moon. We still have much uh, occurring today. Oh, <laughs> right. Two year reminds me. I'm sorry. New moon. <laughs> There's still much going on. But keep those seeds in your mind and try to find a way to nourish them and so that they flourish. Tonight, at least our night, here we will have our uh, monthly EUN, Esoteric United Nations, uh, meeting. And uh, it will be a Zoom meeting. And if you would like to join, um, somewhere I think is the link to you. Have they received uh, the link? Yeah. Uh, maybe you would like to join us as we begin to look for how you can help your nation, and what you begin to notice uh, about your nation and its qualities, and how improvement can come. So maybe think uh, during the intervening hours about your country and some of the positive things that you've begun to see really emerge, which tell us something about the rays of your country and also the obstacles natu naturally which need to be worn away so that the country can express its soul nature. So lots of love and many blessings from Tuya and myself and the whole communications team of the Moria Federation and USR. And uh, hopefully we'll see you tonight. You'll, uh, on the weekly um, uh, program that Tuya and Ann have prepared for you, You'll see the link, and uh, I'm not sure. Let's see if I can if I can find it. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to find the the weekly link so that they see it. And here it is. Yeah. 
but maybe some people would like to join, right? Michael, do you want me to post it? Yeah, yeah, do that, Michael. Thank you. I'm glad you're glad you're here. I had a little trouble with Anne's uh, interpretation. I need yeah. to know how to do that. Um, so, anyway, yeah, there it is, and uh, it takes place at 5 p.m. Uh, GMT. Uh, oh, you're correct. Excuse me. Two years correcting so many things I have to say, and she's she's correct. It's 7 p.m. GMT uh, tonight. And like I say, if you want to be part of this effort at National Redemption, uh, you can come in and see what we do. And then maybe if you want to stay with us, you'll make your pledge and continue. So, Michael, that's going to be on uh, the chat, right? You're putting that down. I posted it into chat. It's in the chat, right? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, friends. Well, all of us uh, wish you a fine day or night or whatever it is for you. And we hope to see um, the members of the EUN there and people who think that they might want to uh, participate in this kind of work. So many blessings, lots of love and we'll be we'll be seeing you uh before long okay bye now